That's the only thing we do. We don't provide instruction. We don't work with private schools. We simply provide instruments to 10 Puget Sound area public school districts for use by students who need them. Uh, we suffered a computer crash that eliminated most of our records before 2015, and we're, we are trying to recover them. But in our written application, we stated that this is our fourth renewal. In fact, this seems to be our fifth consecutive three-year renewal that began with the Rotary year 2008-2009. So why do we do this? Why do we do Music for Life? Uh, the practical reason is that research shows that instrumental music instruction helps kids do better in many scholastic disciplines, math, science, history, literature, international languages, reading and writing, even in computer science, in addition to what it teaches in terms of teamwork uh, and self-discipline. Uh, we're the first to admit that a lot of kids want to participate in sports. In fact, I've played football, basketball, and, uh, and golf. Uh, and of course, there are other STEM activities and, and things like drama and debate. Uh, but participation in instrumental music activities helps all kids. That is, unless their families can't afford to get them a musical instrument. In today's economy, uh, even before the coronavirus struck, many families cannot even afford to rent a musical instrument. Uh, so that's where Music for Life steps in, providing instruments at no charge to participating school district uh, and emphasizing young students so that we can get them off the streets, away from gangs and drugs uh, and other negative influences, uh, all the while giving them something meaningful to do uh, with their time. In other words, we provide an equal opportunity for the equal education that's guaranteed by the Washington State Constitution. We start wherever the school districts begin their music instruction. Sometimes that's fourth grade, sometimes it's fifth. I personally didn't get started until, until the uh, sixth grade. Uh, so Music for Life is just as much an education program as it is a music uh, program. We are an independent 501c3 nonprofit organization that is supported by many local Rotary Clubs, by government agencies, corporations, foundations, individual donors, uh, and many others. Uh, we've had the endorsement of the State Superintendent of Public Instruction. We have been working on a new relationship with the Washington State Department of Children, Youth, and Families. Uh, you may remember it as the Department of Social and Health Services. So we started Music for Life for Seattle Public Schools, and since then, we've added programs for Highline, Shoreline, Edmonds, Everett, North Shore, Bremerton, Auburn, Kent, public schools, and we recently announced our 10th program for Marysville uh, Public Schools. Uh, so here's how it works. We get price discount on repairs from local vendors. Uh, we work with Canelli Keys Music, uh, located in Linwood, Ted Brown Music, uh, headquartered in Tacoma, Hammond Ashley Violins is located uh, in Issaquah, and a few other preferred vendor partners. Uh, you might wonder, why do they do that? Uh, and the simple answer is, it's all in exchange for volume. We have run probably 5,500 instruments through all of those uh, vendors over the course of the years. Uh, we also provide recorders, that's the little flute-like instrument that sticks straight out of the mouth uh, for use by third and fourth graders. Uh, they practice on those instruments uh, for a couple of months and then they're invited into Benaroya Hall to play their recorders with the Seattle Symphony Orchestra. So as I say, we're an independent 501c3 organization, uh, and we have enjoyed four three-year terms as an official Rotary District uh, project. We have been given the Friend of Music Award by the Washington Music Educators Association twice. What you see here is the one for 2012. We also got one uh, in uh, 2018. So a question I'd ask is, how is it that some kids can compete in the Duke Ellington and other national and local jazz festivals and do so well? Uh, and as with all of us, they all start somewhere. And it's the young kids that we emphasize with the idea that a rising tide lifts all boats. We believe that all of them should be able to play, not just the ones whose families can afford to get them uh, a musical instrument. 
So that's great philosophy, but what have we actually uh, accomplished? During the last three years, we've delivered 869 ready-to-play musical instruments to all of our programs. That's the last three years. This is with large increases every single year in our just concluded full fiscal year, 2018-19. Uh, we delivered 334 instruments valued at more than $157,000 to our then nine participating public school districts. So let's take an even closer look at this. By the beginning of March, we were really on a roll again. This is a month ago. Uh, we had delivered 224 instruments to now 10 public school districts. This was 67% of all of the instruments delivered of all of last year, the entire 12 months, 67% of all the instruments and 81% of the instrument uh, values that were delivered all of last year in just the first six months of this year. Uh, some of those instruments, by the way, included baby grand uh, pianos, uh, all while keeping our administrative costs to just a tad over 15%, uh, by the way. So how can this be? Generally, we have well-organized booster clubs supporting many of those programs. So these booster clubs are comprised of local leaders, including many Rotarians, who help us raise the funds needed to pay for the instrument repairs and help us increase local public uh, awareness. We establish a Music for Life booster club in each program that is comprised of local leaders. So we have a Highline Music for Life booster club. Uh, we have a Shoreline Music for Life booster club uh, and so forth. We report our progress to uh, the booster clubs at least every quarter and provide informal updates, financial and otherwise, as needed. We were getting ready to just cruise by last year's record and then the coronavirus started. So as you all know, the schools were closed down, the repair shops have been closed. We don't have any idea where we'll actually end up once this year concludes on August 31st. But we do know the effort is worthwhile once we get to the other side uh, of this health emergency. One question that comes up is how we decide on instrument distribution. Uh, we decide uh, in instrument distribution first, we let the instrument donor tell us. If the donor uh, of an instrument wants uh, to designate it for one of our 10 participating public school districts, uh, it goes there, uh, presuming it can be repaired. We have done this every single time for all instruments during our first dozen years. We get probably about 60% of our instruments come in and they're not designated for any particular school district, 60% of them. Uh, and so the second way, instruments are provided to participating school districts based on the productivity of each of those booster clubs. The more funds a booster club raises the, uh, so that we can repair instruments, the more instruments their school districts get. Think of it as, is it fair to all concerned? And it is that simple. So uh, what is the impact uh, of uh, all of this? Uh, participation in instrumental music activities makes for better students. Better students become better citizens better citizens make better communities and potential Rotarians, by the way. Uh, so finally, Music for Life is a local program that helps local kids right here in the Puget Sound area. But it's not just a one-time flash in the pan. The Music for Life program has to be sustained from year to year. Uh, and musical instruments, I can assure you, don't just fall from the skies. Yes, Music for Life is a nonprofit, but it's important to realize that it's a nonprofit business. Even though they do give us discounts, we still have to pay the vendors to repair the instruments so that they can pay their employers, employees. Uh, the booster clubs are open to anyone who cares about kids, instrumental music, uh, or education. So with that, I would say thank you for listening. Uh, if Catherine Carboni, Ro Catherine Carboni Rogers is the past president uh, of the Des Moines Normandy Park Rotary Club uh, and our interim uh, chair of our Highline Music for Life Booster Club and the one that nominated us for renewal this year. So if Catherine has anything that she wants to say, 
Uh, she, this is a good time to do it, Catherine. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yep, yes, we can. Um, yeah, so I'm pleased to be here in support of Music for Life. It has um, been a phenomenal uh, partner with Highline Public Schools. We have, uh, so many children have benefited in Highline, and as you may know, Highline has a high uh, level of poverty in our community, and um, I think if uh, there was ever, uh, there's never been a more important time for Highline, for Music for Life to be in Highline, given that um, we are seeing uh, an incredible impact from this coronavirus thing. And when we had the last downturn, our free and reduced lunch numbers shot up and I'm anticipating um, even more of that this time. So we're gonna have more students in need, not fewer. So um, I really would love to see this program continue and continue growing stronger in Highline, as well as in the other school districts that it is now operating in. Thank you. Uh, we had a, a question from uh, typed in, uh, David, uh, and, and I think I, I typed it, but I wanted to, uh, I answered it, but I wanted to verify it. Uh, what districts are we in? What districts are you in uh, besides 5030? I think you're in every- The only, the only formal recognition that we have is District 5030. We are also in uh, uh, Bremerton, and we're in Marysville and Everett, which are in different uh, districts as well. Bill, you probably know those numbers better than I do. Yep. We are beginning to uh, look uh, at trying to get the recognition, the official Rotary District Project status uh, from other districts uh, as well. But frankly, they're not, don't seem to be as well organized uh, as our district is. Uh, but we're, you know, that's something we'll certainly work on. Yeah, was, that'd be uh, uh, District 5020, which is uh, swings from Tacoma, swings around the peninsula side all the way up to Vancouver Island, and then 5050 is north of Mill Creek. Everett School District would be in 5050 Marysville School District. I, right. got, a, uh, I got a question from uh, Earl, um, and Earl, uh, Earl out over in Vashon. Uh, once schools are back in session, do you have any plans to expand to other school districts in the area? We would love to be uh, able to expand to other uh, school districts, uh, Earl. Uh, we add about one or two school districts uh, a year since the, uh, since the beginning. It is not an easy process. Uh, uh, and the most important thing is we like to have the support of all of the local Rotary Clubs uh, within that particular public school district. It's not uh, it's not absolutely necessary that we're supported by all of them, uh, but we like to have the support uh, and, and uh, Highline is a perfect example of it because when we started out, we had the endorsement, uh, not only of the Des Moines Rotary Club at that time, uh, but also of SeaTac uh, and Tukwila, I think was the other one at the time. Uh, and so we do, we're, we're very ambitious. We do want to grow, uh, uh, but, it has to be done rather carefully. Okay. Um, what is the annual budget? Uh, this is from um, Heber, from uh, Edmonds Day Record, I believe. Or, uh, All total, it's about $250,000 right now. That includes uh, the in-kind value uh, of the instruments. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? We're gonna do something fun for a change. We keep on experimenting with Zoom. I'm gonna launch a poll here, everybody. Paul gives you the opportunity to go ahead and uh, answer two questions. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And that means that you should be able to um, see it here. I hope so. So you should be able to see the poll. So if you could please vote. One, uh, do you wish uh, for more information about Music for Life? You vote yes or no. And the second thing is, is that uh, the online meeting is one format to do it. We're, we're kind of concerned about the fact of the meeting uh, as far as a Zoom for voting. And so we have an online version, which is this version, or would you rather see a email ballot come to the clubs and come that way? And so I'd like to have your opinion on that. Uh, we have uh, nine people out of the 18. I'll leave it open for a few more minutes here. Um, this uh, webinar format is something that we're gonna be using also for the assembly coming up, which is the district assembly project, which is gonna be going on for a number of weeks because we cannot meet in person. So uh, we'll be, uh, it's got a, a little bit of bells and whistles to it, a lot more than a Zoom meeting. I do thank everybody for coming.
Um, we got a couple more minutes to go and uh, before I end the polling, and then I'll open it up for any more last minute questions before I close the meeting down. Uh, we're gonna end the polling here in about five words. We should be done by now. And I'm gonna stop, uh, stop sharing. And so uh, any more questions at this time? Uh, one question came from one person, a uh, couple people. Uh, okay, we got three, oh, we got three questions that came up. First question, Earl, the Bashan School District Superintendent is a member of our club. Hint, hint. <laughs> okay. Yes, so, I, I, I'm aware. I'm aware of that, Earl. And actually, uh, we started to have some conversations uh, with him, but they got gotten short uh, changed by the health emergency. Okay, Christopher Stone. If Music for Life does not have district endorsement, will it still continue? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, and Christopher, uh, let me, um, let's see, uh, I'm going to allow you to talk here for a second, Christopher. Did that answer your question okay? You can unmute yourself if you want to. It does answer part of the question, but then also, uh, what does 503 will contribute annually? And it's been a program, a district program, for so long, which is good, but, but wouldn't it continue even if it didn't have district program status? And I know years ago, we uh, took out the word rotary from Rotary Music for Life. Uh, comment on that, David? Yes, that's a very, very good point. Uh, it did begin uh, as Rotary Music for Life. Uh, and I was a member of Seattle Four uh, when we started it, which is another reason why uh, the numeral four is in our name. But we started out as Rotary Music for Life. Uh, and then I had a couple of district governors that came up to me about a year later, uh, and they said, David, you have to take the word Rotary out of your name uh, because the lawyers back in Evanston, Illinois, will have conniptions uh, because they jealously guard the integrity of the use of the word Rotary. Uh, and they also said, while you're at it, you should also set up uh, a separate 501c3. So we did both of those things. Uh, and Rotary Music for Life became Music for Life uh, as a separate 501c3, which is one of the reasons why it will, it will continue, uh, you know, whether it has, we, you know, we've enjoyed and we love having the Rotary uh, endorsement. Uh, but, you know, we're also, we also work with Kiwanis Clubs, uh, Seroptimus, uh, Elks, uh, and a variety of others. Uh, and, you know, we want community, we want broad community support for our work. There is, uh, Christopher, to, uh, to kind of highlight the word rotary is, is being uh, the easiest way for me, for me to, to say it's kind of like Coca-Cola and the Pepsi-Cola Cola. They, uh, Coca-Cola lost the, the term Coca-Cola and it, it's cola. And so they kept the Coke and then Pepsi got the other part of it uh, and they lost their uh, part of the name. Rotary International is deeply, deeply concerned about the Rotary, the Rotary trademark, and they're actively, actively going after a lot of these areas. Uh, a, a, a pretty simple example is, for instance, uh, there's a lot of parks called the Rotary Park, and they're having to rename these parks to, for instance, the Rotary Club of Vashon Island Park, uh, because it's a club park versus the Rotary International Park. So. Uh, we're, we're dealing with lawyers, we're dealing with trademarks, and uh, hence, David, when you were talked a couple of years ago or a few years ago with district governors, it was just the beginning. This is still going through uh, the process of, of, of them kind of scrubbing out years and years and years of everything called Rotary by itself. Uh, let's see, so a couple more questions. Do students get to keep their instruments after graduating? The instruments actually uh, still belong to Music for Life, but we provide them on a long-term loan basis to each of our 10 participating school districts with the idea that the student can use it for whatever she wants to, you know, uh, and I use she, S slash H-E, uh, but uh, can use the instrument for anything she wants, uh, uh, whether it's in school or out of school, as long as she remains in the school district. If, this, if she leaves the school district for any reason, graduation might be one. Parents move out of the district uh, might uh, be another one. There could be a whole host of others. The idea is she should return the instrument to the school district 
so it can then be used by another student. And that is ultimately the biggest value of uh, Music for Life is that there's a tendency to think uh, that one instrument helps one student. In fact, the instruments have a useful remaining life of anywhere from three to 15 years. And during that time, uh, it, it, it can be used by anywhere from two or three uh, to five or six students. Uh, so it's a multiplier effect. I, I was pretty good at the triangle. I think that lasts a little bit longer. Uh, I'm just kidding around. Uh, this is indeed an honor uh, to have David here speaking with us. This is a great program. Uh, and uh, you're going to have a chance to vote for it uh, when the time comes. So the delegates, you're going to receive some more information, a brand new informational package out in detail, not only again on Music for Life, but also with the uh, uh, Harvest uh, Against Hunger, and also uh, Alan Mary's budget from last year. Uh, if you, there's any more Bill, questions? can I say one, one final thing, Bill? Go ahead, David. Yeah, I, I would just note that uh, Rotary First Harvest, now Harvest for Hunger, for Hunger, has been around for s nearly, what, 35 years, yep. something like that, uh, and has been uh, an official Rotary District project for almost all of those years. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why, you know, we really enjoy the endorsement that we get uh, from, from the district uh, and hope to be able to bring other districts along as well. Oh, thank you. Uh, one final question. Do you track inventory of the instruments? I'm sorry? Do you track inventory of the instruments? Last Actually, question. Uh, we, we do. Uh, we, we don't keep a real close track of it. Uh, because we we know as many instruments as we provide, we know we're still just scratching the surface as far as what the need uh, out there is concerned. We really leave it leave it to the school districts to track them uh, closely, and depending on the program, you know they do a, either a very very good job on it or something that needs improvement. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but anyway, we know we know that uh, the instruments that we're able to provide still uh, just scratching the surface of what the what the need is. Good. Well, thank you again, everybody. Uh, this is a, a great, uh, again, a great program. Uh, we're, I'm happy to go ahead and present it uh, for your consideration for the next three years. And since we, um, and then I just got a notice from Catherine that Highline tracks their inventory. Um, so with that being said, everybody, uh, I thank you. And I uh, look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. So thank you so much and be safe. Keep, uh, keep yourself still huddled inside. And with that, uh, this meeting is adjourned.